What up nerds? This video is going to be covering how we can organize our exported variables inside of Godot. It is a very common thing to do uh, that is exporting your variables so you can alter some values inside of the inspector as you see here. Uh, you know, I have the attack variable, the health variable, and then if you look here, I actually have the move speed variable under this movement section and I can collapse it just like the the transform and the Z index and that's what I'm going to be covering today. So it's not going to be uncommon in a larger games that some nodes are going to have a lot of exported variables and there's nothing wrong with that because it is a, it provides a lot of usability to be able to just change these values in the inspector on a per instance basis. But to kind of give you an example of a larger game, um, as you can see here, this has a lot of exported variables. And it would be really nice if we could organize this a bit so it's not as like in your face. So in order to do that, I'm going to go into this script here. And let's go ahead and break it down. Right here, I have the two exported variables, the attack and health, and then my move speed is actually not exported because it does not need to be. Then down here, I'm going to override the get uh, virtual function. And if we look at the documentation, all that is is it allows us to customize the return value of get. Oh, I accidentally clicked on that. Yeah, customize the return value of git. Okay. So then we we'll just want to check for this property and then return the move speed because it's going to be correlated with it. And the same thing with set. Set virtual function and it just allows us to return the customize the return value of set. And same thing, check if the property that's being set is movement slash move speed. So this right here. And then if it is, we assign the value to this variable. And that's why it does not need to be exported. So the last, uh, well, the second to last piece of the puzzle is overriding this method right here. And it's going to return an array so I have it set up here like this, and then at the end, just return that array. Now the array is supposed to be in an, ar an array of dictionaries. And what you see here is all that you need in order to get this functionality to work. All you need is a name and a type. Now the name is what actually creates this property. So if this was named something else, let's just say, jump this section is now named jump and the move speed is still the same because it is this is the actual move speed now these two won't work because it is expecting the section to be called movement but let's go ahead and revert that and then the type is just the type that the that needs to be there so let's just say let's make it a vector for example and then now we have a nice little vector that we can use. Now there are some additional things that you can add, like a hint. And this just provides hint, like a hint for it. And then the usage, uh, we can change this as well. Uh, property usage and, you know, uh, I'll just select anyone so we can actually look at them. But this tells Godot how, how this property is actually going to be utilized. So if we go in here, it's in the global scope. And all I did was control click on that. And you can go ahead and read through the documentation to see what each different one is. But as I said, all you do need are these two. And then it will work. Now, it is very important, and this is the last piece of the puzzle, 
you need to make sure the script is a tool script. And all a tool script does is it just allows this script to run in the editor. So that's how all of that works. Now there's some additional cool behavior that we can go ahead and include here. And that would be to add entire sections. So, uh, well, entire categories, I should say. So you, you have the script variables category, then you have the node 2D category, the canvas item category, so on and so forth. Well, what if I wanted to have my own custom category? Well, we can do that. All we need to do is give it a name. So in this case, it would be called character. Give it a type. Because this is going to be a category, as you can see here, it doesn't necessarily need a type. All right, and then this just uh, is, it's the usage is gonna be either a category or an actual variable. Um, that's what is happening here. It's not needed. So we can go ahead and remove it and it'll still work. But when we do that, as you can see, it gives us an entire new category. But we can go ahead and put that back. And you, as you can see, it still works and behaves as expected. And if you have multiple categories, so let's say we have another category down here. Let's name this weapons. And, and then we go ahead and create another property. We can do, let's just say, ammo. Well, let's go ahead and keep it consistent ammo max ammo and then when we save it we get another another category and then another section and we have an uh, like another section and then we have the property that we just set now we would also have to come up here and just add that to this as well but it is possible so the key thing to notice about this is it works in a top-down fashion so the first uh, this category any actual properties below it are going to be assigned to that category that's why i moved this category down here and that covers pretty much the basics of how to you use this get property list remember it has to be a tool script in order to work. Now, there are certainly uh, a lot of cool things that you can do with this. Another community member actually likes to use it as a way to sort of proxy for their child nodes. That way they can edit the child nodes without having to go in there and hit right clicking on an, in, on an instanced scene and then making it uh, checking that box that says editable children, uh, they'd rather just do it like this, and it works pretty well for them. This is a more advanced use case, but it just shows what kind of power that you have with this. If you have any questions, please let me know. And if you would like for me to kind of explain more about some of these actual usages, uh, please let me know as well. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and this helps you out.